Hello everyone, welcome back to this series of tutorials on C++. I am Deepak Kunyal and in this tutorial I am going to talk about exception handling in C++. So before we talk about exception handling, we have to talk about exceptions. So exceptions are basically runtime problems or we can say abnormal conditions or unexpected problems that a program encounters. So to understand all these things, let's discuss a famous and common example to understand the concept of exceptions. And after that we will talk about the way we can handle such kind of abnormal situations in our code using exception handling of C++. So the simple program that I am going to talk about here is divide by zero. So let's suppose you have a variable a which has some value, maybe one. Then we have a variable b which has some other value and there is another variable c which calculates a divided by b. Right? So this program has no issue till now. But if a user enters 0 here, there will be some abnormal situations and this is going to encounter some problem. So what problem will that be? This will be zero division error or uh, you can say a runtime exception that will occur during the runtime of the program, right? So in this case, this statement is the culprit and all because of this thing. If user does not enter this zero, situation will be perfectly fine. But as soon as the user enters this zero, this statement a divided by b will throw an exception and this division error will be called divide by zero exception. So we need to handle this kind of situation in our program, right? So that we can create a robust and fault tolerant program, right? But if we don't handle these kind of situations, our program will terminate abruptly and prematurely. Right? So this was one kind of exception that our program could have. There are some other common type of exceptions. Suppose you have a new operator and you want to allocate some space. But what will happen if this new operator is not able to find out the specified space? So in this case, it will throw an exception. Similarly, suppose you have a vector and you are trying to access some space out of this on both side of this array or vector. This is also going to throw some exception which could be out of range exception, right? But in C++ we have specified or standard mechanism for handling these kind of errors or exceptions which is called exception handling. And this is especially important when you are working on a project with a large team of programmers. So to begin understanding all these things, we should understand some terms that are important for knowing the concept of exception handling. So first term that you should understand is try, second, catch, and third, throw. So this try is basically a try block which is written like this. So to handle any exception that might throw an error should be placed inside this try block. And whenever we have a try block, it should have some catch blocks. You could have one catch block or it could have multiple catch blocks. Right? So if you have one catch block, you could have another catch blocks and these catch blocks are used to handle these exceptions that are raised in try block. So you could have multiple catch blocks to handle multiple kind of exceptions that are raised inside try block. Right? So if you use try and catch block, your program should look like this. Try and here should be some code 
suppose you have two variables a b so you are going to write a divided by b here and you have another variable c also so you should write this code inside this try block because this might throw exception and this should be succeeded by catch block which will handle this exception or if it has multiple exception then it could have multiple catch blocks right like it could handle divide by zero exception and it could handle like out of range exception so there could be multiple catch blocks if everything goes fine inside this try block all these catch blocks are ignored right so it means if everything is going fine here user does not enter zero in the b then neither this catch will be executed neither this catch will be executed so what we are trying to do here if user enters zero here we do not want our program to end abruptly and that's why we are using catch blocks so in this case if user enters zero for the b our program will be handled in such a way that it will end in a sophisticated manner and the program will and gracefully right so the third keyword here is throw so let's understand this as well so this throw is used to throw an exception to the exception handler or it is used when we explicitly want an exception to occur then we can use throw a statement to throw or generate some exception right so we'll take an example and understand this in more clear way so let's go ahead and use our editor for writing all these codes and understand the concepts okay so we'll create a c++ program here having only main function we don't need any classes for this program so let's declare some variable a b and c and then take some input variable a and b together and then after that try to operate a and b and after that just output c right so let's try to compile this program program is compiled successfully now run this program enter some values for a i am entering 5 b 5 and answer is 1 so till now this program is running fine try to execute it again i am entering 5 for a and 0 for b and now you can see there is some exception and it's floating point exception because there is no standard exception known as divide by zero exception in C++. So it's showing us floating point exception, right? But program has abruptly ended and now we need to handle this in some way. So what we are going to do, we need to use our try and catch blocks. So you can see this is the line where we are trying to divide A by B and this line has resulted into this exception so we need to use try block here and put this line inside this try block and after that we have to use a catch block to catch such kind of exceptions right and then if everything is fine you can print this out so let's do one thing make it 0 by default so that it has some value and no garbage value but as C++ has no standard division by zero exception so we are going to use throw keyword here when b equal to zero so use a if statement and throw some value from here so if you want to throw b or a you can do it so I am throwing b but as you are throwing b it's a integer so you need to catch integer here so I will write int and then e for exception or maybe you can write exp so its type is integer 
and then you can print some message here and I am writing division by zero not accepted so this is the custom message that I am printing here right now try to run this program again it has compiled successfully now try to enter values for a and b and here is the message division by zero not accepted and this is zero we are getting it from here because we have assigned c equal to zero right now looking at this output you can see that user will never know that this program has failed at runtime and has resulted in abrupt ending and user is just going to see this message right so we are using this try catch block for a graceful or sophisticated termination of a program right you can write this program in some other way i will just copy this and comment this whole thing so that you have this program to run after this what you can do you can pass this message from here as well or maybe change something at this place you can make your custom exception so I will write division by zero error or exception right so you have made your custom exception at this place but now you have to handle it in some other way you have to write const carry star and then maybe C and then you can print C here right now try to execute this program again I am entering 5 and 0 and you can see division by 0 exception right so you can create such kind of custom exception on your own you can also use multiple catch blocks so let's try doing that as well so I am just copying this and commenting whole thing so that I can write another program here so what I will do I have two values here in this array minus one and two using this loop I am trying to add it over this array so till it's less than or equal to two I am not using equal to here because I equal to zero is for this I equal to one is for this part and now I am creating one variable e and this variable is taking input from this array so now I have this e variable here you can use try statement and inside this try we are creating our custom exception so if e is greater than 0 we are throwing some exception which is e itself and e is integer in our case but if e is less than 0 in that case we will throw something else maybe you can throw a character so you can see we are using try and then we are using some statement in, inside this try because we want to throw some exception from this place right after that use catch and we can use multiple catch right so first is integer kind of thing so write catch int i and after that you can use catch care c because we are going to handle character here and then pass some messages C out integer exception copy this whole line which we are going to paste here and in place of integer just write character so now just try to pause this video and try to guess the output of this program so you can see we have first value as minus 1 and another 2 so 1 is greater than 0 another is less than 0 so if e is greater than 0 means if a value is greater than 0 it is going to throw a integer kind of value but if it is less than 0 it is going to throw character value so first time it will print care exception and second time it will print integer exception so we will try to compile this program and now run it so you can see we have character exception and then integer exception now there is another kind of catch block which can catch everything so for that you have to put three dot here and then you can pass any message exception caught so basically it's a general exception and it can catch anything and we can use it when we don't have any catch blocks so let's suppose you don't have these catch blocks then this 
block is going to catch anything that has not been handled till now so let's compile this and now you can see this is being executed right but if we have other blocks like integer and character then of course these exceptions are going to be handled here right so let's try the program again and you can see care exception and integer exception the only thing that you have to keep in mind here that this general block should be put at the end if you put it at the beginning like this and it is saying that handler must be the last handle for this try block so it's already saying so so we will not put it here because this block should be at the end otherwise what it is actually trying is trying to handle everything at this place and we will have no use of these right so always put this catch block which is a general catch block at the end right so now as you have seen some examples of exception handling I hope you might have got an idea about this and it seems that this lecture is a bit lengthy so we'll talk about few other things in next lecture if you have any doubt till now you can write in the comments and I will try to answer back so see you guys in the next video till then thank you so much